Hi, Noodle. How, How are you? Oh, hi, Ellie. Hi, dear. <sighs> wow, Noodle. You look kind of sad. Are you okay? Well, this coronavirus is keeping us all inside. I miss my friends so much, and I feel a bit bored and sad and lonely. Yeah, I know how you feel. It's hard to be alone, and we don't know how long it will last, too. But it reminds me of someone in the Bible named David, who was sad sometimes, too. Oh, really? David? You mean King David? Yes, and there were lots of times he was sad, right, Mommy? That's right, Ellie. In 1 Samuel chapter 30, David and his fellow soldiers, they went off to fight the enemy, just like God wanted them to. And do you know what happened next? What happened next? When they came home, they discovered that someone had stolen their wives and their kids and all their stuff. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh. That's awful! Yeah. What did they do next? Well, everyone cried and cried and cried. Have you ever been that sad that you just cry and cry and cry? And David's friends were really mad at him too. But in 1 Samuel 30, verse 6, it says that David encouraged himself in the Lord. That sounds like what I just need. But how did he encourage himself? Oh, I know, I know. He sang songs to the Lord. That's right. And he even wrote his own songs to God. And some are even in the Bible. David often went and talked to God about his problems. And then he also reminded himself of all of the times that God had brought him through tough times. And he sang songs about how God will never break his promises. Because God will never break his promise, he'll always help us. Yeah, he's always helped me before. So he do you really think we'll get through this coronavirus and see our friends once again? What do you think, Nuda? Yes, I think he will, because he's more powerful than a virus and can bring us through every difficult time. Wow, see, Noodle, you just encouraged yourself in the Lord. Yes, I guess I just did. I sure feel better now. I'm going to do this every day. Me too. Me too. Well, how about we do a little craft to help us stay encouraged? Yeah! yeah! So today's craft is all about encouraging ourselves in the Lord. And of course, the best way to encourage ourselves in the Lord is with God's promises, okay? So one of the greatest promises in the Bible is symbolized by a rainbow. So today, we are going to make our own 3D rainbow sphere, okay? So on our link, you guys can download the instructions of how to do this plus our seven scripture verses okay this is really important because all of these scripture verses are one of god's promises of that he will never leave us he will always love us he will always comfort us he helps us he's faithful he protects us and he keeps his promises so all of these seven. so i want you to download this paper and cut out these seven scripture verses and you're going to keep them in rainbow order, just like your paper, okay? Your paper needs to go in rainbow order, okay? So after you've got your paper, so you can either cut out white paper and color them, or you can use colored paper. We are gonna use blue, mm -hmm. green, red, orange, and yellow, purple, and pink. But we're gonna put them in rainbow order. order. What's rainbow order? Red, orange, orange. Okay, so after we have cut out our circles, 
We're going to fold them in half. Yeah, we're going to fold them in half. Okay. And we're going to stick them all together. That's right. So some of the things that we need to do this craft is glue, glue scissors, a rope, and maybe if you want to, you can use a hole punch. A hole punch. Okay. But we're not going to do a hole punch. Okay. So the first color we're going to start with is red. Red. So we're going to um, right. put glue on the red. Yes. Also want to sort of try and add the glue to the top here if we can. If we cannot, then it's okay. okay. This is straight. Okay. Okay. Now you're gonna take your scissors, okay, and you're gonna cut out the promises of God. Each strip goes on the colors. Yes. Okay. I will make the rope. So the rope goes in the middle. I need a punch. So after we're done cutting the promise of God, we are gonna cut into little pieces like stripes. Strips. And, and then if which color goes, if this red color goes in the red color, orange color goes in the orange color, yellow color goes in yellow color, and then keep doing, but it has to be the same color. Some of it will have two, some of it will have one. Make sure to glue it together again. So let's look at red. This red color goes into the red circle. scriptures to encourage yourself in the Lord, right? Every morning you wake up, you can read it. So one day you can read one or two. One day you can read how many you want. But just read how much. This is our 3D rainbow here. So we have to read it every day. And thank you. Goodbye. Don't forget to like and subscribe on this channel. Hit that notification. <laughs> Bye.
happy day everyone. Hope you're doing well and I uh, hope you don't have too much cabin fever. It's kind of funny because a lot of my friends have, you know, with different personalities, you know, the introverts of my friends are all like, um, you know what? I've been waiting for this moment my whole life. I love being at home. I love being quiet and I love getting, you know, energy from it. Then all my other friends that are not uh, extra or that are extroverts are all now like, man, this is painful. This is really painful. And it's funny because I read this book and it's called um, Managing Time. And it talks about bandwagons and infinity pools is what it's talking about. And so bandwagon is if you ask somebody how they're doing, they're like busy, 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 busy. I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy. It seems to be the word of the day. And I find the people that are like that are now having a really hard time because they don't know what to do. They're like, I feel like I'm useless. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm used to being busy, 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 busy. So this is a real adjustment for you. And uh, yeah, you can get through it. The other one is the other people that are not super busy. I mean, they might be busy in a different way, but the infinity pools are those are kind of us, or are not those people, I mean, excluding myself, but really including myself, is those uh, times where the, the infinity pools are things that never stop. And uh, that's kind of like what happens when you get on YouTube and you keep clicking and YouTube knows what you like and then it keeps sending you stuff that you want to keep watching. And then the next thing you know, you've watched four hours of cat videos and how to cook. I mean, I love cooking shows now. I'm like so hungry all the time. But uh, so we're all adjusting to this uh, quarantine a bit differently, but I hope you're doing well. And the thing is we want to keep people uh, still engaged in the mission because the mission hasn't changed. It's just uh, a bit of a temporary reset in a little bit of a way. But I hope you're doing well. And uh, so I just have a few words to share with you. Uh, from obviously the Bible is probably a good place to start so I would like to share and encourage you from the Bible I don't know I'm gonna date myself right now but um, if you don't know who Brian Adams is you can look him up on Google but he had this amazing song uh, from the soundtrack of Robin Hood and I'm not gonna sing it to you because I love you too much but in the part of it is like look into my eyes right and it's like this love scene and these two people are locking eyes and so that's when you know people are engaged and they're, and they're look at, when they're looking at you. People are engaged when they're looking at you. They act differently when they're not looking at you. You know they're not engaged, they're not interested, and they act a lot differently. So I think it's the same true for, for you and me. We have these promises of God. We have these plans. We have these visions of our own life. And sometimes they're great, but uh, we're not engaged in them. And being disengaged looks a lot differently than being engaged. And we can see that through uh, Brian Adams' love song from Robin Hood. And I forget what it's called, but uh, it's probably in the 90s, which is probably the best era ever. Anyway, um, so I just wanted to... <laughs> so I, Micah and I are here today, and we just want to uh, encourage you. And uh, so if you have a Bible, which is good it might be one lying around have your phone you can go to numbers chapter 13 and i'm not going to read the whole thing but uh, it's probably good that you do read it in your spare time just to make sure um, i'm not making stuff up or there might be things that i missed or important detail but i'm actually after one idea today and so numbers chapter 13 is coming through the idea that god has given these people the israelites a promise and they're supposed to go from this place to this place in this promised land they were supposed to come into it and so they've journeyed now from being captives in Egypt they're now moving towards like millions of people are moving towards so you have Moses which is my famous guy yeah and uh, he is leading millions of people and so that can't be easy I mean, sometimes I have a hard time leading myself for crying out loud. But he's leading millions of people into this thing God has called each and every one of them. I mean, the problem is, isn't just for Moses, the leader. It's not like everyone's following Moses because it's his vision. It's actually God's vision for the whole community. And he's the one that's responsible for it, and God has put him in that place. And so he is totally going for it, and he's getting frustrated. And now we're getting to the point where... It's almost like you're so close to the promise, like you, can, like you can see it, you can almost taste it, you're like, it's right there, but there's obstacles in the way. And so what's happening is 
they're, they're getting to the point now he's just like, okay, that is the promised land. We are here. Go spy. Send some spies. Go find out what the people are like. See what the food is like. Is it good food? Do they have spices, fruits? What are the, the cities like? And then after 40 days, and I come back and they, they report back to us. I mean, they didn't have satellites, so they ran by foot, I guess. Um, needless to say. Uh, so 40 days, they sent 12 spies. So one leader from every nation, or every tribe, sorry. So one leader of every tribe is sent out to find out this information and then come back to Moses and report. They come back. They say, this is what it's like. The people are big. The fruit's amazing. They know how to cook. The walled cities are awesome. But it's funny because they have the same promise and they're dealing with the same problem. And then you have two guys named Joshua and another guy named Caleb. And then you have the rest of the leaders. I mean, we're not talking about some whiners. We're talking about leaders of, of tribes here. So whatever they say is going to carry a lot of influence. Right? But so they have these two guys. Let's do it. Let's go at once. Let, like, let, let's do this. Let's be like, you can tell they're totally engaged in the mission because they're like, let's do it. I know this is the, the real, there's problems, but this is what we're going to do. Uh, we can do it. And the rest of them are like, no, we can't do it. That's it. No, no, we're done. They're too big. They're too strong. I mean, and they start complaining, God, like, let's go back to Egypt. Let's go back to slavery. Let's go back to the way we did things before. And it's amazing that even as Christians, we can, like, even if God has a perfect plan for us, we can always find negative things to think about it. You're always going to find something wrong, even if it's a good plan made by God. And I, so, so I, I mean, honestly, I find myself in this kind of category where um, you can see things very negatively. And so, you, I mean, people that think negatively, and so we think negatively about ourselves, so it might be a low self-esteem. We think negatively about people's ideas, projects, and you actually, I call you uh, or myself a flaw finder. I'm looking for problems in other people. And sometimes it's to make me feel better. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm a real good pastor. Um, sometimes you're like, oh, that's never going to work. So maybe it's a negative towards an event or, but you're really, you, you have a hard time seeing the big picture because you're always looking at the small details of why things can't work. And sometimes you think that people that are positive, honestly, you think, are you naive? <laughs> Do you have low standards? Are you using your brain? Do you really know the seriousness and the consequences of what's happening? It's almost like they're saying that to Moses. Do you understand who's in that land? And Moses is like, we have the same God. So why are these two ready to like tear down doors and then these others are like, let's go back. And not only are they saying, let's go back, they're saying, we should go back, but we want new leaders because we don't like our leaders. <laughs> and Moses is like, oh my goodness, I can't believe this. He's like, God, help me with these people. So you have people that are engaged and people that are not engaged. And so, I mean, people that are negative, which we all can be, and so I think I, I've struggled with this quite myself, uh, signs that you may be negative, or even for myself, I was like, you could be negative if you're um, always complaining. It's easy to complain, right? I mean, I find it really easy. Um, flaw, okay, I said this before, flaw finding, you always look for flaws in people. Uh, you see the small picture. You actually get happy inside when someone else speaks up and makes fun of another person. Not makes fun of them, but puts down their idea. So it's like, that's what I would have said, and like, I feel joy in my heart. Kind of a sick, perverted joy. <laughs> it didn't work for you. But, um, so it has been just, it's, it's good to be honest, and, and, and you don't want to blow smoke, and I don't like self-help things, and I mean, you know what I'm saying, right? Self-help is not really helpful if you can't help yourself. <laughs> anyway, but being positive, or I would say maybe this is it. I think the first two people is the mindset we have to have if we're going to be engaged in our mission. And it's, it's seeing a problem, but seeing the possibilities in the problem, if that makes sense. And so possibilities is not so much 
Um, positive thinking, yay, let's be motivated. It's that possi possibility thinking is more like, you know how you manage money or you manage your time? Possibility thinking is like managing your ideas in your mind. It is like, okay, here's a problem. How can we move forward? What solutions can we come up with? Or if there's, can't, if there's no solution or if there's no cure to this thing, how do we manage our time wisely? I mean, how do we move ahead in the mission? Rather than, well, we can't do it. Let's just sit here. Things suck, you know? It's easy to get moved back into that. But to be engaged, we've got to be thinking. It's like, okay, possibility. Engaged people see possibilities in the problems rather than being paralyzed in the problems. And I think that's the biggest thing, is that we need to be people that see possibilities in the problems. And so that's what I think engaged people look like, people that are engaged in the mission and moving it forward. It's easy, even in the things of God, to find why things won't work. But sometimes it's our response. And if you look further on the chapters, there's only two guys out of those 10 lead, 12 leaders that actually went forward. And uh, those are the ones that say, let's go do it right now. So don't sit back, use your time, you know. Um, engaged in the mission, and I love what so long is, like the, the worship challenge is an amazing thing because people are like at home and they're like jamming away, like worshiping songs. And I think it's just a great way to interact and then let people know we're not scared, you know, or worshiping God. And so, yeah, I think that's a few things, words I had for you today. And I hope you're doing well. Uh, we do have a few people that uh, we've con been contacted us so that one of our uh, friends in Indonesia contacted us that she lost her father. And uh, I do I just heard yesterday that my aunties just had a heart attack. And so, I mean, COVID-19 is one of pressing things, but there are other things in people's lives that are happening as well. So if that is you, and uh, we just want to, well, we're praying for you and uh, know that uh, we're thinking about our friends in Indonesia with her father. And uh, other than that, I uh, love you guys. Can't wait to see you. And uh, be nice to see, you know, nice to see people. <laughs> right, Micah? That's right. We want to see people. So have a great day. I think you guys are awesome. And uh, keep on being an encouragement to others and being engaged in the mission. Mission is a great commission. God bless you. You're awesome. Hello, good afternoon. My name is Marianne. So we're in a cut to call. Nika Pimpi Marianne. And this after, I would like to encourage you about giving. And in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 3 to 6, God said, You will be blessed in the city and blessed in the country. The fruit of your world will be blessed, and the crops of your land and the young of your livestock, the calves of your herds and the lambs of your flocks. Your basket and your kneading trough will be blessed. You will bless when you come in and bless it when you go out. ข้อที่3ถึง6พูดไว้อย่างนี้ครับท่านจะได้รับพรทั้งในเมืองและในทุ่งนาท่านจะได้รับพรให้มีบุตรหลานมากมายให้ท้องทุ่งของท่านเกิดผลมากและให้ฝูงสัตว์และฝูงแพะแกะของท่านมีลูกดกท่านจะได้รับพรให้ตะกร้ามีพืชผลล้นหลามให้รางนวดแป้งเต็มไปด้วยขนมปังท่านจะได้รับพรไม่ว่าจะไปทางไหน Wow, this is a powerful promise of God to us. Imagine before we were born, we are born to be blessed. Because God wants us to bless us exceedingly abundantly. And these are the word and promise of God of those who obey Him wholeheartedly. และนี่แหละครับคือข้อพระสัญญาที่พระเจ้ามีไว้ให้กับคนที่เชื่อฟังพระเจ้าอย่างสุดหัวใจ that you will receive and experience this blessing from God ที่พวกเขานั้นจะได้รับประสบการณ์ในการได้รับการอวยพระพรจากพระเจ้า I want to ask you และผมก็อยากที่จะถามทุกคน do you want to receive this blessing from God พวกเราอยากที่จะได้รับพระพรของพระเจ้าไหมครับ 
and let us obey God. ดังนั้นให้เราเชื่อฟังพระองค์ to give our tithes and offering to God. ที่จะถวายทรัพย์แล้วก็สิบลดให้กับพระเจ้า and I guarantee you. และผมขอการันตีเลยว่า because I experience in my life. มันจะเกิดขึ้นแน่นอนเพราะว่ามันเองก็ได้เกิดขึ้นในชีวิตของพี่แมรี่แอนแล้ว how God bless me. ที่พระเจ้าก็อวยพรพี่แมรี่แอน tremendously. อย่างมากมาย Because I am faithful to give my tithes and offering to God. เพราะว่าพี่เมรีแอนนั้นสัตซ์ซื่อที่จะถวายทรัพย์แล้วก็สิบลดให้กับพระเจ้า And I encourage you. ก็เลยอยากที่จะมาหนุนใจทุกคนครับ Let us give our tithes and offering. ที่จะถวายทรัพย์แล้วก็สิบลด And support. แล้วก็ support. To Victory Church of Siracha. ให้กับคริสตจักรชัยชนะศรีราชา For the glory of God. เพื่อพระศิริของพระเจ้า And for the advancement of His kingdom. แล้วก็เพื่อความอุดมสมดุลของอาจักรอาณาจักรของพระเจ้า Let us give big big amount or Small amount. ไม่ว่าเราจะให้เล็กหรือให้เยอะหรือให้น้อย But the most important is coming from your heart. สิ่งที่สำคัญที่สุดนะครับมาจากหัวใจของเรา And I'm so blessed that I want to share my short testimony. วันนี้ก็เลยอยากที่จะมาแบ่งปันคำพยานเล็กๆน้อยๆ One of my supporters in US. คนที่ support ที่มาแอนอยู่ตอนนี้คนหนึ่งนะครับ His name is Brother Ed Gady. เขาชื่อว่า Ed Gady. Imagine that he collected recycled Uh, bottles and cans. เขาเป็นคนที่ผ่าอาชีพของเขาเนี่ยคือการเก็บขวดรีไซเคิลครับแล้วก็กระป๋อง That he will send his support for me. แต่ถึงกันนั้นนะครับเขาก็ส่งเงินสปอร์ตที่ Mary Ann. My mission work here in Thailand. งานที่พี่แอนทำในนี้ครับเขาก็สปอร์ต And I'm so amazed. แล้วก็รู้สึกมหัศจรรย์มากเลย For his commitment to God. สำหรับความมุ่งมั่นที่เขามีให้กับพระเจ้า How he support. His other missionary here in Thailand. เขามุ่งมั่นที่จะ support missionary ที่มาทำงานที่ประเทศไทย Because he obey God. นั่นเป็นเพราะว่าเขาเชื่อฟังพระเจ้า And he wants to glorify God. และเขาอยากที่จะให้พระเจ้าได้รับเกียรติ And God is so good. และพระเจ้าก็แสนดี And glory to God. ก็ขอให้พระสิริทุกอย่างให้เป็นของพระเจ้า If you want to give your tithes and offering and support. และถ้าเกิดว่าคุณอยากที่จะถวายทรัพย์หรือว่าถวายสิบลด And you will send in this account. สามารถที่จะถวายออนไลน์ได้นะครับผมผ่านลิงก์ข้างล่างนี้ Thank you so much. ก็ขอบคุณมากเลยครับ May the Lord bless you all. ขอให้พระเจ้าอวยพรทุกคนดังนั้นเพลงนี้เป็นเพลงที่เราเชื่อว่าพระเจ้าทำสิ่งที่เราไม่สามารถทำได้ไม่ว่าเราจะเผชิญกับปัญหาอะไรมากมายแค่ไหนแต่พระเจ้าหมายความว่าเมื่อสถานการณ์ไม่ดี You're anchored to the foundation, which is who God is, His character, His nature, His word. And so, because you have faith, doesn't mean you're not going to face obstacles. But what it means is you're going to be able to go through it, knowing that your anchor is in who God is. And so, we believe in miracles. It doesn't matter what situation you're facing right now. I want you to sing this song prophetically over your life because God hasn't changed and He's still faithful. Amen. Boldness to believe every promise you've made is ours to release. We stand on Your word as our source of strength, holding on to Your hands. It's all for Your name. With the spirit of faith, a boldness. Every promise you make, God, is ours to release. So we stand on Your word as our source of strength, holding on to Your hand. It's all for Your name. And we.
So we stand on your word It's our source of strength Holding on to your hands It's all for your name
You say 